Uh, Mathieu and I are, uh, are very happy that we are able to uh, present our beautiful uh, to you project that I started uh, a long time ago with uh, a few people, uh, amongst them um, Wim van Petegem, who is still a very important uh, board member um, at Bednet. It's a project for people like Sophie. Ik ben Sophie Hendricks, ik zit in het jaar Creatie en Mode en ik volg les via Bennet. Dus ik ben geboren met een hartafwijking en daar kwam ook nog bij dat mijn linkerlong uh, niet zo goed werkte. In de lagere school was dat redelijk te doen, ik kon naar school gaan, allee, af en toe wel eens naar het ziekenhuis, enkele operaties, maar allee, dat ging. Maar sinds het middelbaar um, werd het een beetje slechter met mij. En dan um, heb ik een grote operatie moeten doen. En dan hebben ze besloten om die linkerlong in 2013, in het voorjaar, weg te nemen. Ik ben dan ook vanaf toen gestart met bednet. Omdat ik ook niet meer naar school mocht om geen infecties meer op te lopen. Bednet helpt mij om um, de lessen te kunnen volgen die ik heb gegeven op school. Zodat ik niet aanwezig moet zijn. Oké. Okay. En vandaag, wat is de modus? Dat is die derde centrummaat. Wat zie je dan? Het meeste, de meeste jongens hebben een schoenmaat van 42. Want in totaal hebben 368 jongens die schoenmaat. Vraag 6. Ja, Sophie? Dus dit is een histogram dan? Ja, dit is een histogram. Omdat je onderaan duidelijk de klassen ziet staan. Oké. Okay. De grootste troeven van Bednet zijn volgens mij dat leerlingen de voeling met de klas niet verliezen. Dat leerlingen de lessen volgen, dezelfde informatie krijgen als de andere leerlingen. En dat ze het gevoel hebben dat ze een deel zijn van de klas en niet speciaal of anders of dergelijke zaken. Dat is voor mij het belangrijkste aan Bednet. Plus dat zij het gewone traject kunnen volgen. Dat zij hun, hun schooltraject kunnen volgen zoals het hoort. Als er gelachen moet worden, lachen we met, samen met Sophie. Of als Sophie iets zegt, luisteren we heel aandachtig naar haar. En we zijn ook heel um, aandachtig voor Bednet, omdat als we haar niet horen, dan zijn we zo zenuwachtig van oei, we horen haar niet. Of als er niet is, mevrouw, wat gebeurt er met Sophie? Is er iets ergs, niks ergs? Ja, contact met Sophie vind ik wel belangrijk. Mijn grootste droom is dan om uiteindelijk in Londen te gaan studeren, ook voor mode. En daarna hopelijk een eigen bedrijfje te kunnen opstarten. Dus het is nu wel zeer handig dat ik allee, door Bednet meer lessen kan volgen, zodat ik ook het, allee, mijn diploma kan halen en daarna verder studeren natuurlijk. Want zonder diploma gaat dat natuurlijk niet. Yeah. Okay, um, this was the impression of Sophie. Um, I am Mathieu. Um, let me uh, guide you through the agenda of uh, today. So I, I will first um, take the word and tell you what we are today, um, the, what we are doing today and how we are doing it. And then Cathy will take over to tell you the story of how it all began and how we got to where we are today. Uh, and then we will close with the way ahead and maybe you can have some ideas for us too in uh, moving, uh, moving forwards. So um, who are we, what do we do? Um, I think the video is, uh, is quite clear. So um, our, our, the mission of our organization is to guarantee the right for education. Um, it's meant uh, for every child uh, that is absent uh, for more than four weeks of school due to medical reasons. Now, and as you've seen in the video, um, it's more than only uh, being connected to the class and the content of courses. It's a more holistic approach. It's really being a part of the social gathering um, within the class, so um, uh, have the uh, social relationships with the classmates and also the structure at school. And also, and that's very important, to prepare for reintegration. Um, I mean, the average duration of, uh, um, of absence um, for children that are absent for a long time is, is about eight to nine months. Um, uh, and sometimes even it can take more than two years. So this is a very important objective that um, um, 
together with the recovery, we also are preparing for the reintegration in school uh, at the same time. Um, some key figures uh, of last year that will tell you the story of what we do today. So um, every year we uh, have more than 1,000 children uh, or youngsters that are connected with their classes. Um, and actually to, to, to get every individual child to the class, there's a, a whole system behind it. Um, because you need some support, how will we do it? Some practical obstacles uh, to get uh, get rid of. Define objectives. Uh, what is the objective of, of having that connection? Also align expectations. Uh, sometimes teachers, uh, parents, children have uh, really different expectations and we need to align them. Otherwise this, the project will never be successful. So there's a whole guidance um, to get every of that 1000 children um, connected with their class. Then there's more than 750 schools involved every year. Now, what does that mean? It means that we uh, actually we provide guidance and advice and best practices to teachers because for them it's most of the time the very first time that they have this kind of situation and it's a very specific situation because like what we are doing now is we have a, a virtual uh, meeting so it's re really clear every is everybody's behind uh, the, the pc in the case of that it's different everybody's in the classroom there's only one children child that is uh, connecting from, from, from the computer. And it's a really different way of thinking. So how do you do that as a teacher? How do you interact also as classmates? Uh, how do we get uh, the, 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 the child involved? But also um, thinking about what is the best IT, even thinking about the network uh, issues that you may have in school and uh, get the support uh, with that. So this, that's also part of the holistic approach that we deliver. Then, uh, of course, it's a big logistic operation as well, because as you've seen, we also de deliver the materials um, to, uh, to, to make it happen. Um, and that's really all the materials that you've seen we provide it. We provide it for free. Um, and also, even if schools or, or uh, uh, families at home do not have a proper internet line, we have a partnership with the main telecom operators um, in Belgium to actually connect them uh, via sponsored uh, internet lines. So it's, it goes all the way to the very end uh, of, of the connection. And then um, more than 9,000 chats with our help desk. That's a really important piece in the, in the support that we deliver because you have to imagine sometimes there's a, a kid of six or seven year olds behind the computer and some simple clicks like muting or unmuting. I mean, if you don't find the button, you need to we really want the, the, the children to be autonomous. So not that the parent has to be next to the, the child all the time, uh, but, but really a, 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 an autonomous, um, uh, independent way of following courses. And that's why we have this chat where the, ch the children can connect uh, with, the, with the help desk. Also for teachers, when they're interacting with their classes and there's any technical issue, they really don't have the time to fix it. So that's why we have this help desk to fix it in their place and to really yeah, uh, uh, make it happen all the time. These are some figures um, to explain you the way we work. The target group, the population of children, uh, you see here, most of the children are in secondary education. Um, but then, yeah, we have a 30% in primary education and even uh, some toddlers, uh, um, uh, um, preschool, that's from five years old, we think it's relevant to, uh, to, to be connected. So we have Main diseases, um, and actually, actually, there's a shift. Um, used to be cancer a, a few years ago, but now you have we see a, a shift in the in the population. So most of the children using um, um, this uh, uh, solution have uh, psychological disease, uh, and and um, so and that's why they are absent from school. Then you see cancer, and then bone muscles and blood and immunity. Um, the evolution, I will not tell too much about it because Kathy will tell you the story behind this, uh, this uh, histogram. Uh, but you see, today we have more than thousands and we come from, uh, from, from, from that. But then in terms of organization and funding, we, have, we are an organization of about 25 people. Um, where you have, on one hand, yeah, the logistic people making sure that the deliveries, the hardware is delivered. And we have a big warehouse in Ghent as well, if you see a picture there two people. We have regional advisors um, that are in touch with teachers, with schools, with hospitals, 
uh, with doctors also in their regions um, to make sure these expectations are aligned and that the information is there that BedNet is a possibility uh, when you need it. We have this central help desk um, also organized from Ghent and then a headquarter uh, that actually is designing all the processes to make sure that the, the, the machine is working, let's say, um, for people doing that, but also yeah, um, the, the fundraising, the bookkeeping, uh, HR, and so on, uh, it's all uh, in there. So at this moment, we have a, a contract for three years um, to continue our work with the Flemish government, um, so with the Department of Education, and they provide actually about 80% of our uh, funding, and then 20% of the funding we need to do what we do, uh, we need to find from uh, private funding and fundraising. Uh, to give you an idea, we have a turnover yearly of about 2.5 to 3 million euros uh, every year. So this is um, the, the size of our organization. So, yes, how did we get there? Um, the idea for um, BetNet started uh, a, a long time ago in my head. Um, I was um, a rather um, or, or a very well-known uh, person in, in Flanders and I um, started a big movement against cancer. Now, these first years, I saw that um, the children and youngsters um, could go to home earlier because um, technology uh, improved uh, in hospitals, but uh, the education didn't follow. So that was a reality check for me. Years later, um, I was in Antwerp, um, in the city of Antwerp, an alderman for education and youth. And so I started to find a solution for this problem. Uh, I started connecting people with uh, different backgrounds, uh, professional backgrounds, um, um, educational uh, people, but also um, people um, of uh, technology uh, backgrounds. And um, a year later in uh, 2003, we um, developed our, our first pilot project for uh, all children with a long-term illness. It was a, a low-budget uh, project, a private, uh, public-private partnership with um, a very nice lady, a citizen of our um, city who uh, donated uh, funds. Um, around this time, uh, Microsoft was propagating the Anytime, Anywhere learning um surrounding and so um we started from there with six pupils in a virtual school this uh, is our first uh, logo uh, of that project in uh, in antwerp then i um uh, i wasn't an elderman anymore went back to uh, vrt um, the, the Flemish broadcast company where I worked. And um, I thought uh, to, to, uh, it's important to uh, uh, establish this um, concept for all uh, children in Flanders who are suffering from uh, long-term uh, illness. So I started uh, with a few people, amongst them uh, Wim van Petegem, people uh, whom I I am very grateful uh, till this day uh, for um, starting this big adventure uh, with me. Uh, volunteers with uh, different professional uh, backgrounds. Uh, we had to, to have some funding to uh, be able to start the project and uh, the King Baudouin Foundation um, gave us this uh, basic uh, uh, start up funding. Um, and we had to, uh, to find partners, develop the technological part of it, the very, very important technological part of it. We found this in uh, IBBT, the Institute of Broadband Technology. Uh, today's, uh, today it's called uh, iMinds. And uh, together with partners there, we founded the ESKIT uh, project. Um, 
it was <laughs> a very complicated um, way. Uh, first, you see, um, the first uh, tryout we had was um, a 3D virtual school with avatars, which was a very, very complicated thing. Uh, that didn't really work because it was too complicated. Um, and then uh, gradually um, we uh, developed or our partners uh, developed uh, the ASCIT box prototype. Um, and we still work with, um, with that constellation uh, in, in the classes and um, at uh, children's homes. Um, the BitNet system, um, this was our first logo you see uh, at the top. Um, and our look and feel uh, from the beginning. Uh, the BitNet system uh, was like this at home or in hospital. Uh, the children um, received from us uh, a laptop, a webcam, a headset and a printer and scanner. In the classroom, you had a computer with a movable camera, printer scanner and uh, sound boxes and, and a microphone for the teacher. So for example, when the teacher um, um, wanted to do something with the other pupils in the classroom. Uh, he or she could uh, put a paper on the scanner um, and this came out of the printer uh, at home, um, out of the children's printer at home uh, and so and vice versa. So uh, they could, uh, they could uh, communicate uh, like uh, the child was in uh, real, uh, real uh, in, in, in the class. Um, we had this constellation, but um, so, so we had the technology uh, to start, but of course, uh, to, be to be able to roll this out for many children, you have to have fundings. So um, we started uh, lobbying and, 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 and visiting um, people in uh, big uh, companies. Uh, for example, uh, Belgacom, uh, now Proximus, was our first big partner. Um, <clears throat> they um, started um, rolling out the broadband uh, lines in um, schools um, uh, which didn't have um, the technology there uh, or in the children's home. But uh, we also had um, big companies um, that gave us money to uh, build up our team. We um, started um, visiting the provinces uh, because um, there we could uh, find um, funding for team members. Uh, the, uh, the regional uh, advisors uh, Mathieu talked about. Um, who could uh, establish the human connection around uh, the children with uh, parents, teachers, doctors, and the child uh, itself. Um, and uh, the Flemish government uh, started to fund us too. But then we wanted to take it a step further. So um, we drew up um, a paper and we started lobbying in parliament and government. Um, because we wanted to um, get what we were doing uh, into a Flemish decree. Um, because um, education is one of basic children's rights. And so we thought um, that um, government and, and parliament um, should um, recognize this. So uh, in 2014, it uh, became a children's right in Flanders to have a synchronic internet education, uh, CEO, um, when uh, uh, the child was um, suffering from a long-term illness or had a, a very severe accident. Um, so uh, from that moment on, we could start uh, growing um, a lot. <laughs> we went from uh, one to a few to 25 uh, staff members 
at that moment. So we could start growing uh, in, in the children we uh, were reaching. Uh, you see, um, in 2014, we had 278. And in three years, two years later, in uh, 2017, we already had 732 um, pupils in one school year who were um, um, who were connected uh, to their uh, classrooms. We wanted to move uh, again. We wanted to move further on and find a better solution for secondary schools, because um, in secondary schools, uh, as you know, uh, you don't stay in the same classroom all day, uh, and and. Uh, our uh, constellation was was a bit um, difficult to uh, to carry from from one uh, classroom to another. So, um, with new partners, uh, technological partners, and design partners, we um, developed an innovative mobile unit um, with uh, an integrated hardware, software, uh, smart design, which. Um, uh, received a, a very important design award in, in Flanders. It still was rather heavy, uh, 12 kilos. So you have to have uh, two pupils who carry it, but um, this works and this works uh, very well. Um, worked until today because we are uh, moving ahead uh, still. Um, you have the funding, you have the technology, but uh, it's very important to uh, be able to reach more and more children because these children are in blind spots, are at home in isolation. So um, we, uh, it, it's very important that uh, they uh, begin to know about VetNet and we begin to see where they are. So communication became um, more and more important. We have a very uh, good um, communication team member and she developed a website with uh, uh, personalized target groups. For example, teachers, uh, parents have their own pages. And a few years ago, we started developing um, a youngsters uh, hub where um, young people can um, can can uh, uh, make content, for example, for uh, for others, and and, and it's, it has become um, a very nice group. Uh, we have a lot of social media buzz activity. Um, whenever uh, things happen in the Bednet family, uh, everybody um, uh, knows it. Uh, so uh, we work on this one and um, for uh, two years we had a, a very important partnership with the Belgian Red Devils, our national uh, football team um, who are uh, going to win the European um, Championship in, uh, in July um, and they started taking us with them in uh, their social media, uh, which has, not to, uh, of course, um, a, a, a very large uh, audience. So we started um, reaching um, a, a totally different sort of um, uh, children and, and, and families um, uh, by, by their uh, support. Uh, you see a, a picture of them walking with our uh, mascot, uh, the, the <laughs> blue uh, Bednet uh, cat, um, in, uh, in the stadium uh, on one of uh, the big uh, games. Um, last thing in communication we have is uh, our yearly pyjamas day. Um, that's a very nice one uh, in which we have uh, also reached more and more uh, children a day um, each year um, uh, on which uh, all children go to school in pyjamas and um, this is a support for all the sick children uh, who are staying at, uh, at home. This is the, the logo um, right um, the corner uh, of the National Pyjamas uh, Day. Um, quick uh, from the conception of the idea uh, and the foundation, um, the milestones took 
to where we are now. Uh, so we started um, the uh, nonprofit organization, the NGO in 2004. In 2007, we developed the prototype and the first project. Uh, 2013, we had a new um, software. A year later, um, synchronic internet uh, education was uh, inscribed in uh, the Flemish education decree. Um, the mobile unit, uh, the first mobile unit came in 2016. Uh, 2018, we started developing um, a new one, new technology with new software. Um, and uh, last year, um, we were starting a new sort of mobile unit. Um, but uh, Mathieu will tell you more about this. Um, and uh, uh, then we we had um, the three years uh, framework contract with uh, the Flanders government, uh, which is very important for us. Uh, gives more oxygen to uh, to the to the organization and to the work we are doing. Uh, to conclude, a few takeaways: um, when you want to. Um, to move into um, social entrepreneurship, um, uh, you have to see the blind spots, find opportunities to realize uh, what's needed. Uh, you have to take ownership and responsibility, connect the different dots you find um, to move forward, uh, combine different elements to lay the puzzle, and the puzzle changes every day. So you uh, have to keep uh, combining different elements um, you encounter. You have to live your dreams and never, never, never give up. Yeah, and let me then um, conclude with, with, with some um, yeah, ideas and trends uh, that we see today that, that is moving BetNets uh, forward. So the way I had some, some trends we see um, in, in the landscape that we work in. So first of all, um, we see an increased digitalization in schools. Eh? So um, our government is providing laptops to all children. Um, there is a, a, a willingness of using educational technology within schools and the technology used uh, in schools. If you see the, um, the, 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 the speeds of development of video conference and ad tech uh, software, it's amazing. Eh? And I, I, before uh, starting, I heard uh, things like Gerritan and Ruby and Vibrella, well, it's just, one of the few of many thousand uh, solutions that we could, can use today. And I think that's a big difference for us. When we started uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, BetNet was a pioneer and we had to um, start in an environment where there was nothing. Maybe the beta version of Skype was there, but nothing more. Um, so we needed to develop an own software, an own hardware solution. And that's indeed a, a big leap for us today. Today, we are more focused on how can we use whatever is available within the context of children and schools to have this optimal um, uh, connection of uh, long-term uh, absence children to, to the classrooms. And that's a, a really different thing. So instead of designing the new model um, of BetNet, we try to see how can we use the soft and hardware that is available, which has amazing technology uh, just right there. Um, and it's, it's changing every day. So, so that's a, a very uh, big um, uh, trend for us. Secondly, um, we, we see an increased yeah, poverty and, and more than poverty, inequality. Um, when we look at the children and, and the population we work with and inequality, it's, it's more than only economic. It's also the, the support you get from home, um, the, the, the background you have in, in education, the, the type of learner you, you are actually. And I think that's a really big challenge for us to see how we can provide the best support that is best fitted to every child and more, even more to the context that the child is in. So sometimes you will have to help families um, to to design the way how to use best bed nets and, um, and, and, and so on. Then of course, a big challenge is the classroom practices and methodology. I think the concept we have in terms of having this uh, movable camera and a, uh, uh, a screen is one thing, but then when the teacher starts 
doing projects and, and doing co-teaching and having big uh, uh, classes, uh, uh, removing the walls between classes, but also moving outside. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much uh, different methodologies today. Um, children that need to uh, 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 prepare their, um, the, and prepare the classes themselves. So we need to, to make sure that the solution that we deliver to classes is adapted to all these different uh, classroom practices, which is a big challenge. We used to, uh, 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 let's say 10 years ago, it was more um, uh, ex-cathedra and we needed to provide a solution for that. So now we need to think further in terms of these classroom practices. And then of course, of course, we need to watch really closely the government policy and not only watch it, but also try to influence it from time to time in terms of, okay, what is the policy in terms of education, healthcare, well-being, children's rights, and so on. Um, for instance, uh, one of the political parties uh, in Belgium is now saying, yeah, also um, children that are uh, um, um, yeah, uh, young delinquents that are uh, placed in institutions, actually, they also have the right to stay connected to their classes. This is, of course, an opportunity where Bednet uh, might uh, be a partner to, to see how we can get there. So it's really important to, to watch the, the, the public opinion, but also government policies. And, uh, and being fast, a fast mover whenever things uh, change there. So these are some trends. Before moving to the Q and A, I, uh, we just wanted to, uh, to to share a video. Uh, it's only thirty seconds. It's in Dutch, so there's no subtitle um, uh, in English. But the reason that we want to show it is because um, it is for us. It's a spot that we used to have to raise awareness about uh, what you are doing. And it's the, the mindset that we try to work in, and it's you will feel a, a really positive mindset. It's about dreaming. It's about reali realizing dreams. And we don't want to be the kind of charity um, that is looking for pity. No, we want we want to be an organization that is really proud, working with children that are really proud and independent, and support these strong uh, young children. And I think that this is really the spirit of this uh, video. So I want to show it to you, and then we can move to some questions um, uh, right after. Ook wij bidnetters dromen van de toekomst. En... Ook al zijn we nu ziek. We kunnen onze dromen waarmaken dankzij Bitnet. Door van thuis uit de les te volgen. Vandaag meer dan ooit hebben we jouw hulp nodig. Om die dromen waar te maken. Steun ons daarom via bitnet.be. Oké. Okay. <laughs> Was het? Are there any questions? Okay, yeah, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Cathy and Mathieu, for sharing the story of Betnet uh, with us. Uh, I think it's a very nice example of uh, how innovation uh, can be applied uh, in, in teaching and learning, uh, thanks to the innovative technology that we are using, of course. It's also a nice example of uh, how to be entrepreneurial in the quality ethics sector in general. Uh, uh, starting from scratch, like you said, uh, there was nothing at all. Uh, and now we have a fully operational professional organization um, that is uh, supporting more than 1000 uh, uh, Flemish uh, children uh, all over the, 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 yeah, the, the, the country, let's say. Each um, year. Yeah, and uh, each year. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, and it's also a nice illustration, I think, how you could work together with companies, um, but also work as a company yourself. Uh, I think that's also a very important message uh, from this story. And indeed, there are a couple of questions in the chat uh, popping up. Uh, maybe we can start uh, with the question. The first question came from Milena. Uh, Milena, you, if, if you would like to uh, ask your question in person. Sure. So my question was, um, how about starting with uh, getting the funding from the government? So in your case, it's uh, it's an NGO. It's a it's a company that, of course, is supporting uh, learning. But I guess many other uh, companies, many other startups are also working on similar things. So how to start this conversation with local government or the national government 
any tips for, for the entrepreneurs that you could give? You have to have a good story to start with. Um, so you have to have a lot of passion, a good story, and then you, um, you, you just go for it. Um, in, in our country um, nowadays, not uh, when, when we started, but nowadays you have a lot of programs in which you can uh, inscribe uh, yourself as a, as a startup. Um, uh, in these days, uh, the word startup didn't exist here um, at all. Um, so I, I think that in, in different countries, in your country maybe, um, there, there will be uh, programs in which you can inscribe yourself and, and then you have to, uh, to, to um, um, yeah, to, to um, uh, go uh, before a jury and, and um, see that you uh, get it. If I can add to that, uh, Kati, I think um, in, in, in the governments typically will have this kind of schemes uh, where you can have applications for projects. Uh, so having a good story is one thing, but also try to, let's say, make sure that your story fits within yeah. one of these project lines is a good idea. So you can you can tweak a bit of, of the story. Uh, is it more about IT or is it more about uh, education? Well, it depends on, on what government you're looking uh, on. So that's one thing. Um, and also sometimes I think you need to have the guts to apply for something that probably is not really in scope, but um, by doing it, you show that you have guts, you show that you have a good story, and that story, if it's good, it will, it will reach out. And, and sometimes contacts you have with governments uh, five years ago, then after two or three years, suddenly the person comes in a position and, 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 and you're there. So it's, a, it's also a long-term strategy. And you, you can start small and, and uh, apply for, uh, for, for a small project, uh, non-governmental. Um, and, and, and use that as a step stone to, uh, to move for, further and further. That's how we have done it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm now um, yeah, falling out of my role here as moderator, <laughs> uh, <laughs> being involved in Vetnet story myself. I think it also helps uh, if you build up your network uh, mm -hmm. in, 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 in governments. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, Kati is like she said. She she worked for uh, the, the the national broadcast company, so she was a very visible person in in Flanders. Uh, but also in politics, uh, she had her uh, her links, and and that also helped, of course, uh, to to use the network uh, that you have uh, at at all occasions, uh, including politics and governments. Uh, I think. Um, uh, but it's 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 not something that you can take for granted. Eh? Um, you you have to be very careful with your links uh, there um, and just use them uh, for the proper purpose. Uh, uh, I think that's important. Uh, okay, uh, there are more questions, so uh, I will keep silent and, and give the floor to to Kanti and Mathieu to answer the questions. The next one came from Tony. Uh, Tony, you would like to raise your question uh, in person, please? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, yeah, I just asked, you know, obviously, I mean, it was a, a, a fantastic initiative uh, for children with long-term illness at home, how, how to get them into the classroom. But of course, now with the whole COVID, you know, there are lots of children at home, uh, you know, with lots of technology, then how do we get them into, in, into the classroom using a virtual environment? So I just wondered how that has impacted on your, on your overall, you know, product offering service idea okay it's, good it's question had a, it had a huge impact of course because everyone was at home but what we saw uh, was that uh, as as Mathieu explained inequality grew um and it it was a total reverse thing um, um the 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 teacher was uh, sitting in the classroom or at home and all the children were dispersed at home uh, that's that's a totally different situation than a uh, whole classroom that's uh, sitting together and one child uh, uh, which is isolated at home. Um, so during this uh, lockdown period, um, our children used um, whatever their friends um, in the class uh, um, used. 
Um, but uh, Mathieu, maybe you can explain uh, what we did to, um, to make the difference for uh, our children. Uh, uh, Kathy, Kathy, can yeah. I just ask you, you talked about it raising inequality. Yes. That the whole COVID, so, so how did you see it raising inequality? Um, well, for example, in, in Antwerp, which is the biggest city in, in uh, Flanders, um, we saw that um, many children dropped out. Uh, the children who didn't have a laptop at home um, or, or a computer, uh, the children who didn't have uh, a connection, um, so uh, they disappeared. And um, uh, the other children um, followed uh, the education and, and they um, developed a huge gap. So, um, and um, one in six children in Flanders uh, suffer from poverty. So, um, you have a, a lot of uh, inequality in, in society and we have to deal with that. Yeah, so, and, and like Cathy said, the, I mean, the, the, the need um, that is rising when everybody's at home is different than the need that you have when one child is away. Um, luckily, in Flanders, we only had a, a short lockdown period, and um, actually, with a longer period, with sem semi lockdown. So, children would go half time to school, or the half class could, could go, and then the half wouldn't. And at that moment, the need of this that net solution remains again. Uh, it is again very relevant. So actually, this is what we did, and um, and but we have a lot of lessons learned indeed uh, on how to deal with with um, yeah children that have less capacities uh, at home to have a good environment uh, and so on. And, and so it's uh, it's for us a very interesting period to see how we, we get there. But also, and that's also another impact of the COVID. The numbers uh, have have uh, uh, risen. Risen. The, uh, risen uh, because some children um, with uh, immunity diseases, uh, sometimes they only come in bed nuts uh, in November or December when the, the, the flu is uh, in the country. But now as from September, they were there already. So actually we started with a big number and they're still there. So the, the, the average time will be longer this year of children within um, uh, the bed nuts because of their immunity and their illnesses and their vulnerability on a medical sense. Uh, but also some children, who have a brother or a little sister or a, a, a father Aaron. or mother that is um, ill with high risk of um, uh, uh, when they get COVID at home, that it would be really uh, bad. So some children and actually about hundreds this year uh, were not ill, but were using BATNET because uh, uh, to protect their uh, uh, family member at home. So this is also something that, uh, that, is, that was really new for us uh, as well. And we saw solidarity grow <laughs> in Flanders for our bednetters. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think we have to move on because there are many more uh, questions. Uh, I think um, when how you raised your hand. Uh, uh, we, we do not hear you yet. Uh, can, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah now you can hear so, uh... you. I just got a question about personalization uh, because uh, I uh, noticed that the personalization is mentioned in your, uh, in your PowerPoint. And uh, I just wonder how could you uh, deal with personalization and uh, maybe to, to achieve personalization uh, among different uh, individuals. And the second question is, uh, do you think your uh, software or your technology is uh, uh, it's a personalized technology. So, thank you. First question, um, I could say uh, it is a very personal uh, setting because uh, the child is really uh, interacting with its class um, uh, in, in real time. So you can't have uh, anything more personal than, than this. Um, so it, it, uh, it is seen on the screen. Uh, the teacher can talk with a child. Uh, the other pupils can, uh, can stay um, uh, during, um, uh, be between the classes uh, and, 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 and chat, uh, chatter. <laughs> um, uh, so so um, it, it is a very personal thing between child 
and its classroom. Yeah, yeah. And that's why um, in the presentation we talked about aligning expectations and aligning on the objectives of uh, the, the yeah the, the project that we do with for every individual. So it, it may be that for some children the objective is um, yeah uh, getting results uh, are, are, um, uh, um, in, in mathematics for instance. Uh, and for the other, it's not about the content at all. It's all about the social gathering. So you get, and then you make other choices in what courses mm -hmm. and what moments to attend with your class. So, but this so, discussion is done between the parents, the child, um, and the teacher and the school. Um, and so we, we try to mediate if it's uh, necessary, but we make sure that everybody's aligned. And so that's, that's um, uh, when you see the result, we have a thousand different objectives and thousand different uh, expectations in every of the thousand projects that we are supporting. Um, mm -hmm. But there are general things, for example, um, when, when, when there are exams, the child can, uh, can, can uh, do his exams uh, through our uh, system. So um, it, there's a button in which it can raise its finger. So, so it's, um, it's, it's customized class per class and, and child per child. And then on your question on the software, I think today we have a, a standard number of functionalities within the software. Um, and, and this is actually um, one of the reasons why we move to let's use whatever is available in the context so that we can even increase this, um, this, this personalized uh, uh, um, software uh, aspect. Because uh, um, um, you have this... Um, predefined uh, in Microsoft um, software that reads texts for you. Well, when we use yeah, mainstream hard and software, we can use that. Um, there's technology to, yeah, uh, to have a different screen angle and have bigger letters or smaller letters and so on. We can start using this, but this is for us something that we are um, only starting now um, uh, because technology is there now. So we are not there yet in, in really personalizing, personalizing the software. Um, but we will uh, make sure that the children can use whatever is available for their specific needs um, on our standard PCs. So, yeah. I think it's yeah, always finding the, the, the right balance between, yeah, at, at a certain point, if you have to serve 1000 children uh, or even more, uh, then you need to have like a, a professional standardized uh, procedure and system. Uh, and that's what we also have in BetNet. Uh, but at the same time, every child is different uh, and every child's situation is different. Uh, so the, you, you have to, in a way, personalize each, what we call project, uh, child and class uh, situation. Um, and every, I think, yeah. every pathology is different also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you need to find that right balance between what you do standardized and what you do personalized. Uh, that's also a nice aspect of the BetNet project. Again, I'm not playing my role as moderator here. Uh, <laughs> sorry for that. Too much uh, passion, Vim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excuse me. Uh, there are more questions in the, in, in, in the chat, uh, and, and many of them are related to all kinds of technologies. Um, Alison, you uh, were talking about robots. Um, there was, uh, what, what, uh, there was uh, Pablo asking for 360 video cameras. Uh, and I think I saw someone, oh yeah, Noor, you, you, you mentioned augmented and, and virtual reality. Um, so there is a whole bunch of, of, of technologies that are available indeed and that we could try out in BetNet. Um, but how do we deal with that? Um, yeah. And I will not answer that question. We have tried out uh, most of them, <laughs> but uh, they were all too complicated because what we want to uh, to, to serve is um, a very, very simple tool um, in which um, the classroom is the classroom and, 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 and a child can participate in the same way uh, all other children can participate. Now, if virtual reality uh, and all those other things um, uh, become uh, more uh, more developed, uh, then we can see what we can incorporate. But um, we we have tried we have to tried a, a lot of um, nice things, but uh, we didn't go further with it. 
No, I think uh, look, um, um, it's also about uh, the cost of some solutions. Yeah. Uh, we can also. optimize solutions. <laughs> we can yes. uh, put uh, five cameras in the class, but then we cannot afford it. Uh, um, yeah. so can I, I think, interrupt here, yeah. uh, Mathieu? Because there was also a question by Alison about the cost. Uh, Alison, you, you, would you like to, to ask that question yourself? Uh? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, this looks a fantastic project. And I think it's that vision and passion that has just been consistent, <laughs> uh, that really shines through here. And why don't we have this in the UK? Why don't we have this in our version of this? So what, what does it cost? And who does it pay so that you can obviously sustain and grow um, what you offer? That's you? That's your mic is off. Mute. Your mic is off. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a question that I can answer in terms of I can uh, give you a statistical answer. I know that uh, one set of full hardware sets is about one thousand one thousand five hundred euros to have it, and then we can use it for for two three children uh, a year. So that's I can I can tell you that, and I can tell you, also tell you a kind of average on what it would cost um, for for one year. Uh, we have. We have more than 1,000 children. We have a turnover of 2.5 million. So let's say, yeah, 2,000, 2,500 euro um, for the guidance of one project every school year. This is a statistical number. In reality, it's really different because some students, um, they will need no help at all. There will be a, a fantastic situation in the school with a teacher that is fully aware of everything, with parents with full support, with a motivated uh, student, and they do just do it. Maybe they, they will even use their own materials sometimes, and they are really uh, independent. And then you will have situations where you'll have a lot of uh, this, um, uh, mediation to do, uh, a lot of training to do with the teacher, uh, support to uh, take care of with the, with, with the parents, even installing internet lines. And so that's why it's, it's really depending on the situation where you can have a tragic that, that is maybe costing you, yeah, let's say, three, four hundred euros, and then others that will, but in terms of time consuming and, 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 and people that, that work on and that, that will be more like three or four thousand euros. So, so it's a different, it's a difficult mm -hmm. question. Um, but yeah, on a, on a total uh, pack, we can say on average, we need about two thousand euro to maintain this system um, for every uh, trajectory support every mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and it's it's a bit complicated because um, uh, we we the, the funding the government gives us is not sufficient. So uh, we always have to find uh, other uh, funds um, uh, in companies. Uh, children organize themselves uh, a lot of things, um, but it's not only. Um, the, the projects ongoing with the children and, and, and the classes. It's also the innovation uh, every time uh, that costs money uh, too. So um, now we're, we're developing uh, a new phase in, uh, in the project and, uh, and every time uh, there's a lot of money that goes into this. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, I'm just looking at the time. Thank you for answering. Uh, I hope, uh, Alison, that you have an, now an idea how to uh, find uh, the, the proper money in the UK for such a project <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, um, Milena, uh, you raised your hand and maybe that could be the last question then. Uh, I, I, had a, I had a request more than a question. So I uh, okay. just wanted to ask if, um, if Kathy, Matthew, if uh, there are some other questions in the chat that uh, you hadn't had a chance to answer yet. Maybe you could uh, have a look and answer in the chat because I'm really curious about what you have to say still. Okay, I think the, the only question that's left in the chat which hasn't been answered yet is one by Alison uh, about um, what does, uh, um, if teachers uh, who had experiences uh, with teaching children through BetNet uh, felt more confident uh, in, in teaching uh, in COVID times, uh, if, if I just rephrase it in my own words. Uh, I think that also relates to the question about um, uh, innovation in the organization, but also the, let's say, the, the, the more scientific approach that we take uh, in, in the organization. Uh, but maybe Cathy or Mathieu would like to answer that one, uh, or shall yeah. I continue? Uh, no, I, I think um, 
we indeed see sometimes an obstacle with the teacher who is not feeling comfortable in using technology in the classroom. Um, and so um, what we um, try to do is uh, we have a lot of students um, um, reaching out to us to do a master thesis or sometimes doctoral research. Uh, and this is one of the topics um, that um, actually every two years or every year, every two years, there's a student willing to investigate, OK, how can we support teachers that have this uh, kind of obstacles in, in using it and what kind of support do they need? So this is an investigation we try to do on a scientific base and then uh, learn from it um, and, and, and deploy supporting um, uh, um, materials, but also a uh, supporting strategy to them. So yes, there is. this is, of course, uh, uh, an important bottleneck. Um, and maybe it's it's one of the main critical uh, success factors to have these this, this teachers involved. Um, um, but this is changing yeah. now yeah. Uh, yeah. during during the, the COVID periods. Um, all sorts of teachers uh, have had to uh, to do it so uh, in the beginning this was different because uh, an, an example uh, in a Jewish school we had a, a child who was suffering from from a skin disease and he couldn't go out so he lived in the in the basement uh, at home and uh, the school wanted to um, to do a Bednet projects and the rabbi didn't want to because he was scared of all the technology. So one of the teachers uh, started the project and after a few months, the rabbi took on with it. So um, it's, it's, it's also uh, to, to help um, erase the, the, the fear they have. And then it's very simple. So um, it goes with the flow. Yeah, I, I think it's a, in, in COVID period, a lot of events were cancelled. And then after two, three months, the events weren't cancelled anymore, but they were just adapted to the new reality. I think that's exactly what's happening also in schools and, mm. and whenever a child is, is uh, ill. First, we don't know what to do with it. Then we know, okay, we have to deal with it. And, and you just need, need to take that first, the first step and, 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 and it starts rolling. So we are actually we're really optimistic about the post-COVID period. Because indeed, all teachers will have this experience with video conferencing. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect to have too much um, uh, resistance into having a camera in the classroom or being um, on a screen anymore. Uh, and this was uh, a, resist a resistance we had five years ago, four years ago. Uh, I think th with COVID, this mm. probably has disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. And answering well. the, the, the virtual reality and uh, robot uh, questions, uh, this would complicate it so much for the teacher. Uh, so uh, the simplest solution that works good is the best solution for us nowadays. 